Hello and welcome to our SBI page. Let me briefly introduce our team members, uh, Julia, Christian, and myself, Roy, and our product, PS Calculus, where we want to turn everybody into a henna. Now quickly getting into the problem. What is the problem? Let's meet Jack. Jack, just like 2.8 million other talented, very, very motivated business professionals, quit his job this month. What is Jack doing now? He's been sending out his CVs to a bunch of companies, but all that comes out of it is that the CVs land up at the very bottom of the slush pile. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have all these companies, small, medium, large, which are looking for their jacks to uh, sort of fill into their positions inside the companies. Where are they looking? LinkedIn, social media, various business schools, and most importantly, true headhunters. It costs them time and money. Enter here, Stalker. Peerstalker is an online platform that is designed to match the recruitment needs of companies with large established groups of professionals outside of that company. So in this example, a company posts some of its job openings on our website. Jack's friends, who are always looking for a cool job for Jack, go onto our website to have a look and find a job that really matches him well. They refer him and the recommendation and the CV end up in the HR manager's office on the top of the pile instead. If Jack goes through the normal recruitment process, through the normal interviews, and gets the job and stays on for three months, his friends get to split a finance fee. So who wins? Well, Jack finds his dream job. The company gets to fill a position without having to trawl through LinkedIn or pay large sums of money to recruitment agencies. His friends get to split an awesome 5% finder's fee, and Peer Stalker takes 10% of anything that's paid out. Okay guys, so let's try and look at the opportunity here. It, it takes a headhunter roughly 173 days to fill a position. Of this, they will charge you a whopping 25% of Jack's annual salary. Thus netting headhunters a yearly billion, $12 billion market. However, research actually shows that in order referred candidates are twice as likely to stay at companies. So we feel as if we found a gap in the market that day. Yeah, let's look really briefly at the numbers. If we can refer one Jack, assuming that Jack will earn $80,000 a year, Pearsdor will get to keep $400. With our goal of referring 1,000 Jacks in year one, we get to keep $400,000. So in order to succeed in this, we need a skilled team. We want to have another co-founder who is technical. We want to build a minimum viable product, and we want to start gaining critical mass through getting companies to sign up. Then we want to take on social media and actually get a pool of talent onto our side. So what we're specifically asking the panel tonight is to one, help us with feedback and possibly mentorship. Two, help us to find a co-founder. Three, incubation. I hope you're as excited about this as we are. We're a PS Talker. Pleased to meet you. So we talked to HR professionals about how they feel about referrals outside of their network from people that like the person that they're referring. Yeah, so perhaps I can, I can take this one. Um, this, this whole business idea arose out of uh, some needs that we experienced, all of us actually, in our home countries. I am an investment banker in South Africa, um, and this is one of our biggest problems that we face, is that we spend huge amounts of money, even throwing kind of functions to get alumni together, to keep us in mind when they need to grow people and refer them into the business. Um, and you know, we, we threw this huge function and we got like two referrals out of it, so it's not a good way for companies to go out into the market. Um, companies the companies that we've spoken to uh, typically tend to say they don't want to pay high fees to headhunters. They would be prepared to pay a finder's fee, but they don't want it to look tacky, um, and they want it to be well governed and for to get rid of the fraud risk of paying money outside of the organization. So there seems to be um, a, a sort of an attraction to tapping into the established networks out there, um, but they're not tapping into at the moment and are having to pay uh, recruiters to go into those labor pools and find that talent. So the, so the, uh, the vast majority of the HR departments that we've spoken to have said, okay, we would love this. It's not gonna cost us anything. Nobody gets paid until Jack gets the job. 
Um, and it's, it's a really great opportunity to tap into these new labor pools. What role are you going to go after first? <laughs> like technical, marketing? We have lots of roles, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so we're planning on starting here in the valley. This is, and we feel that there's a high demand for high skilled labor in the valley. Um, and as I so think you mentioned, that's my question. About. So when a lot of companies in the valley already offer, you know, five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar referral bonuses to their existing employees, um, and you know, so how do you? Why would this be better, or why would this be, a, you know, a solution that most people are already being offered by their own companies? What we find is, is that companies are prepared to offer their own employees that mind this fee. But there's no incentive for people outside of the company to keep that brand in mind if they find a good match. So you might find that someone's worked at the company before, they understand the culture, and they find someone who would be really great in that position. But it's not top of mind over a barbecue to refer that person into that position. Um, we, in terms of skills that we, we're going for and, and customers we're going for, it would be the larger organizations Currently, would pay for uh, we would pay for headhunting services. So we're looking at the financial services industry, um, IT industry. Interestingly, that $12 billion uh, market for headhunters, 20% of that is from the financial services industry. So we know that that is, is one to target. And I'm sure there's a lot more leads, but I think the biggest company who asks a lot of hiring managers is the quality. So how can we be sure that the people in a company's network are going to send quality people to the company? That so, not that they're, they're out of work friends, because usually the people you want already have jobs, right? So the, uh, to address that question, what we would like to say is that unless, as uh, Julia mentioned, that uh, unless Jack gets hired, nobody gets paid here. So there is no incentive for somebody to keep spamming people with, uh, so I have, I have like 10 friends and I'm going to spam them with all my top tier jobs. Uh, so we don't even show uh, you know which position like you know which position you're applying for, but how much money you'll be getting out of it. We don't know that. So you, there's no way for you to uh, you know spam people with all these different kinds of jobs uh, because there is no incentive for you, and you'd just be uh, wasting a lot of time trying to re refer your friends for something that's never going to come. Nothing's going to come up. Yeah, and if I can further elaborate, I think the uh, also part of the idea is to uh, build in a credibility system. Um, as Roy just mentioned, so if I keep referring 25 people a week, my local high school friends, to a CEO position, I will obviously lose uh, credibility, and of course we will need a way to address this. We will need a, an algorithm that can sort uh, who are the most relevant referrals for your company. So one of the great things about tech now is, and, and I mean you know, social media tech and, and, and mobile tech, is it's pretty easy to get the app on. Harder actually to get to cast on hypotheses mm -hmm. than you have to test them. And I would suggest, much like the other team, I want to suggest and observe that you still have some, in fact, a lot of untested hypotheses that you might want to consider spending some more time figuring out whether you can run some experiments mm -hmm. rather than just we're going to launch the product and ask for why. In fact, you mentioned the very small vertical market, which I used to love to do, and it is test things where no one noticed. And I hate to say that South Africa was a place where no one noticed, but <laughs> they did it. Right? I, I mean, I would test things in Australia, the US, and New Zealand, because they spoke English, and I didn't have to change much of the app or the product. But I could run experiments, and if they cratered, I didn't screw up my brand or my company or whatever. And you also mentioned that you're a domain expert in that area, and I would actually say, is there a set of experiments we can run very quickly when I go back home to say, were the assumptions correct here, and is that worth scaling? Does that make sense? Yeah, wouldn't it be awesome if there was so much uh, demand for you this bet. over Facebook, for instance, right. that we built something for the demand rather right. than the other That's right. and, and, and in fact, that you found out, gee, just for financial services, that what they were paying for one event you know, that would like fund us the, for the first six months just, just on a substitute because you've now found an industry that are, is incredibly underserved by recruiters or not very effective, et cetera. Silicon Valley, I think, is a special case, meaning, you know, we're, we're so over demanded for engineers and technical talent. I'm not sure that scales in, in other areas, maybe it does, but I'm, I'm, but I'm not sure this craziness scales. I just think your core assumptions 
to scale across the world, and you might want to try them out. So congratulations, guys. Great idea.